The old house hunkers on its hill, all peeling white paint, bay windows, and spindled wooden railings overgrown with climbing roses and poison oak. Rose runners have prized off clapboards that now hang snarled in the canes. The gravel drive is littered with spent casings caked in verdigris. Martin Elverston gets out of the truck and does not look back at Turtle sitting in the cab, but walks up the porch. His jungle boots are sounding howly on the boards. A big man in flannel and Levi's opening the sliding glass doors. Turtle waits, listening in the engines ticking, and then she follows him. In the living room, one window is boarded over, sheet metal and half-inch plywood bolted to the frame and covered in rifle targets. The bullet clustering is so tight it looks like someone put a 10 gauge right up to them and blew the centers out. The slugs glint in their ragged pits like water at the bottom of wells. Hey guys, I'm back again. I'm here to do a review of My Absolute Darlene by Gabrielle Talent. Okay, this was my book club's sixth book of our school year 2019 to 2020. And we discussed it Saturday, today. And it was fantastic. Uh, this book blew me away. I wasn't really sure if I was going to get along with this because of the subject matter. But the writing and the construction of the story is so exceptional. I, yeah, yeah, yeah it's fantastic. So this is the story of Turtle Alverston and her father, Martin. They live in the area of Northern California along the coastline. And they live in a secluded part of the town that they live in. So where they live is completely surrounded with forest and, uh, you know, little tributaries and lakes and rivers and stuff like that. Turtle has been living alone with her father since the death of her mother which we're not really sure how her mother dies, but since the mother's death, Turtle and her father have forged quite a close and dangerous relationship. So it is a story of a father who is mentally and sexually abusing his daughter. I would say that Martin is, his character is a sociopath slash psychopath. He has a very strong control over his daughter and he has broken her self-esteem down to crumbs. Another thing about the story is the atmosphere of the house that they live in. Her father is into guns so there are loads of guns and things in this in this story and they play an important role because the the psychological badgering that Turtle goes through is just as bad as having a gun held to you. The story is a story, of course, eventually of hope, which is the hope that Turtle finally can find something within herself to save herself from her, her uh, sick father. And so it is quite a, a long read because it's like it's a little just a bit over 400 pages so you're going to be engrossed immediately in some very uh, disturbing things that you're going to read so I wouldn't recommend this for someone who will find it difficult reading about sexual and psychological abuse especially on a child from from a parent I wouldn't recommend it if you find that too heavy to actually read. The high points of this book are the writing is absolutely exquisite. You can tell that this author has trucked up and down the Northern California coastline. He knows this very well. Everything is described so you can actually see it, smell it, feel it. 
it's 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 extraordinary not only that but his character development is also quite good you have dynamic between the father martin and his daughter turtle it's very intense it's it's gut-wrenching it's 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 nauseating you know at you know at times to hear there's a lot of cursing in here so if you don't like to read about people cursing i must say um fuck and motherfucker are some of the words in here that you're gonna see a lot in the dialogue the the characters each even the secondary characters hold up very well in this story that is primarily focalized on the daughter and uh, her father but the secondary characters help in advancing the story. I have to say that the dialogue is fantastic. The dialogue, all the dialogues, this isn't like dialogue just to be having two people chatting. This dialogue is actually going to move the story. But not only that, develop the character and show you something that you need to see to understand better. This book focalizes on the idea of how is it that someone who is abused so much psychologically and physically, how is it that they manage to not want to get away from that person? You know, like, how is it that they are willing to accept this abuse and, and how it takes something really, really dark and tragic to sometimes bring them out of, you know, this darkness. It's it's fundamental because that's really what he's writing about. This is not gratuitous in any shape or form. He's showing you how uh, someone who is like this sociopathic, psychopathic, how they operate. How is it that they manage to make sure that person never leaves? Like they, you know, like they're not holding a gun saying you you know, you have to stay here or they're tying into the bed or anything. This is a girl who has free reign to run around. And that's what she's known for doing is being the girl who's running around in the forest, running around in the, you know, and, and discovering the lands around her home. But she always comes home to her father who sexually abuses her and psychologically abuses her. So the story really is focalized on that. Like, how is it that that could happen? So with my book club, we had this very intense discussion on Zoom and it was amazing because we were in accord with a lot of things on this one. We all were wavering around four and a half to five stars. I just bought mine right up to five stars because I was already thinking four and a half. But after discussing the book, I just went totally to five stars because this author really went the route to tell this story very well so that we could understand now not only that but this is his first book this book came out in 2017 he is a he's a really wonderful writer he took the time to do the research this is a man that was brought up with two mothers you know in his household reading a lot you know so he has a sensitivity to be able to write like a young girl, surprisingly enough. You know, that was the first thing I was skeptical about. But he was very good at writing the father. He was very good at writing the daughter. He was also very good at writing the daughter's friends and also the other characters of, you know, the different people that are in the town that they live in. That's all I have to say about this one. I. You know, I'm going to, you know, highly recommend it to people who can, you know, get through the, the, the d tough bits because there's some tough bits in here. But it's, I swear to you, it is so worth it. It's so well put together and just just freaking fundamental. So it's another five star read for me. I'm pretty, pretty happy with that because I haven't had very many five star reads. This will be the third one and I've only read uh, 19 books so far this year. I'm a little behind my Goodreads challenge, but I'll catch up eventually. So yeah, highly recommend this for people who are looking for a good literary fiction with excellent nature writing. Okay, excellent nature writing. So that's all I have for you today. Comment below and tell me if you're considering reading this book or if you've read this book, what you thought about it. Let's get a discussion going below. Okay, bye.